Hey, this is Radio Geek here, and I just want to welcome you back to a short Arden setup tutorial. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about setting up a VPN, both the client and the server on your uh, local node. Um, a couple important things at the time of this video release, you'll want to have firmware version 3.20.3.1 um, or newer. Um, that one has some specific things in it that help with uh, VPN stability and a, and a few other fixes for uh, bug fixes as far as the VPN goes. Another thing to have before you uh, start setting up your VPN is make sure that you have some type of internet to your node, um, preferably hooked directly into it. Um, if you have one of the uh, GLINet devices or the Microtech HAP, um, the multiple ports on there, you have the port that can be plugged right into your local network and give you that internet access. Otherwise, uh, you'd have to do it through a device um, such as a, a managed switch or something like that that's hooked into your node itself. So um, just make sure that's set up and working prior to attempting this because you will have to download and install the software, which will not work without the internet hooked up to your node. Um, so another thing is, of course, on the Arden website, they have got very good documentation. And uh, as you can see here, I have loaded that on the screen just to kind of show you that. So if you have any other questions outside of this, there's a lot of good things in here to read, um, both about setting up VPN and other uh, various things that you might want to try to do with your nodes. So we'll get right into it. So uh, start by going to your uh, node uh, using the local address or if you know the IP address. Um, we'll go right into the setup. And uh, then in here, you can go to either tunnel server or client or tunnel client. It doesn't matter which one. Um, they're both going to install the same exact software, but you need to do that before we go and try to configure any type of VPN. So we'll just click to install. It'll take a second here, and um, you'll see it uh, pop up here that uh, installing and don't reboot. All right, so we've refreshed and we're back on the dashboard of your node from uh, the software install. And we'll go right back into setup. And we're going to show you how to set up the server part. And then we can show you how to set up the client part once you've uh, um, for both sides. Now, you might be working with someone else that's uh, providing your tunnel uh, the tunnel server to you, or you might be connecting some of your own nodes. So. Um, they'll both help in you understanding how to set up your VPN. So we go to Tunnel Server, and for the DNS name, you'll either need, if you have a DNS for the actual server, which would be typically at wherever you have your internet, or if you type in your public IP address. And so an easy, quick way to do that is to go to Google, and all you type in is, what is my IP and it'll show up here. Now I've uh, grayed out uh, what my actual IP is just for security sake, but you'll show it up here and all you can do, you can copy and paste that and then just type it in right here to whatever it is. Now, most of you will know that this is a fake IP, but I just stuck it in there just so it's there. Now, you want to click Enable, and then Client. Client is the name of the node. So if you look at your node, the name of the node is KC0WKP-Mobile. Now, this is the one we're on. You want whichever one is going to connect to this, you want to put that name in here. It has to be exactly as they call it. So if it's KC0WKP-1-Northwest or something like that, you want to type that in there. So we're going to connect to node. KC0WKP-1. Um, and then give them a password. So test pass word. And then the nice thing with the newer software, if you have an older version of the uh, firmware or uh, software on your Arden node, um, this won't be in here. But in uh, since 3.19, uh, you have contact info. This is really nice, especially if you have multiple connections to multiple areas to keep track of who's who. So you can just put in, you know, 
uh, in an email address or something like that, which is nice. If anything changes, you can, sh you know, get that info real quick or have a note of where that's going. So, and then all you got to do is click add. So we clicked add. Now the thing, the stuff that you're going to need for the tunnel client is this DNS server address, the password, and this network. So when we go over to that side, you'll see where we need that. So we'll take this, um, we'll take 172, the network, and put it right into the notepad. And we'll take the password, copy it right in here. Um, and then the DNS server address and put it right in there. So I got all that right on our notepad real quick. <clears throat> The other thing you can do is you can actually click on this little mail icon. It'll bring up your um, mail service, and it'll give you all these connection details, just like that, how I just copied down into the notepad. And then you can just email it to that person. So if, if it's someone else that's doing it, or email it to yourself so you can save that. So, All right, so we'll go over to the client side. Now, to take all this information, we would just type it right in there. We'll enable it. <clears throat> type in the server. Correction. Password. And the network. And then click Add. And then make sure you save the changes. Now, this is one thing, um, unlike some of the other stuff in the node, that if you save the changes, you don't actually have to reboot. Um, you'll see configuration saved, and it's now active. So <clears throat> now, one thing I forgot to do over here, you'll see it grayed out. I forgot to click Add, and I forgot to save it. So. Add and save. And you'll see it come up here. Now, you'll see under active here, you'll see the little cloud here. Now, if this was an active VPN, you would actually, and it actually had a connection, you would see this actually turn blue. And that means that it's actually connected. And then if you were to go to your node status, um, in your mesh status page where you can see all your connections, you'll see it show up there. And so I'll actually log into one of the other nodes and I'll show you what that looks like here. So I've logged into one of my server nodes here and you'll see um, a list of all the different uh, clients that I have on this server. And on the right here underneath active, you can see that these first three, they are not active. So there's no active connection. Um, and that could be a number of things. Um, most of these are actually off because two of these are portable setups. Um, the other one, the other person only connects from time to time. But you see the next three here are active. And so those have the little blue outline of the cloud and then the arrow in them. So that means it's completely active. And then if you go to node status and then mesh status, you can see that there are several that are connected here. And then you'll see that in parentheses, they have TUN after them. And that means they are directly connected via the VPN tunnel. So, and that's your setup. So a couple tips if you're going to be running a server on one of your nodes. Um, the first thing is make sure that you have a stable static IP or um, you pay for or get some type of DNS uh, service for your address. That way, if your address changes, um, your clients can use that DNS address and it'll automatically update with the new IP address of your um, public IP. Um, if you don't do that and your IP address ever changes, you will have to uh, be aware of that, figure out what that new IP address is, and then send it out again to all those clients, to those people that are, have those connections. Otherwise, a lot of providers, internet providers, will provide you um, uh, usually for a, a little extra a month, a static IP, which then should never change and would be the best route um, 
if you're going to run a server. The other thing is you have to port forward 5525. Port 5525 needs to be port forwarded on your internal home router to your Arden node. So um, the best thing to do is when you hook your node up to your um, your router or a network switch at home, go into your home router, figure out what IP address on your local home router that is taken, and then port forward it to that and make that IP address static. So that way it doesn't change any time you reboot your node or anything like that. And that way your router doesn't give it a new address and then you got to go in and fix all your port forwarding. So um, just a few little things to make sure it runs smoothly and you, you're not uh, having to chase around problems and things like that. So feel free to check us out on uh, Facebook. Uh, the Arden, there's the Arden group. There's a couple different mesh websites as well as um, the forums on Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network on ArdenMesh.org. Lots of people willing to help out and answer any questions. Thanks, and uh, we'll see you next time.